So dear friends, we are almost in the month of March. You know the Julius Caesar's famous book by Shakespeare it says beware of the ides of March. The ides of March. But March is a beautiful month. And for us Christians that whole month is going to envelop what we call the the climax of the Lenten season. From the 1st till the 31st, it's going to be a complete the sufferings, the death and resurrection of our Lord. A beautiful season, a beautiful month for us. Of course, our children, many of them have finished their exams, the others perhaps will do the last exams and they will also be free. It's a beautiful month, I would say. And let me start with the scriptural sharing, the readings of this week, of this Sunday, which are once again very beautiful. The central theme is on the Gospel, Gospel of John, chapter 2, verse 13 to 25, which speaks about Jesus cleansing the temple. It's a beautiful gospel, I said, because we see the other side of Jesus. We have seen Jesus as the most merciful, compassionate, going out to the others. And here he's a stern master. It's something that someone has disturbed him so much that he does not stop using even what's called that stick with a rope to hit the people to drive away people from there. And the occasion, of course, as you know, is because the temple or the outer court of the temple has been utilized for selling, for buying, perhaps a lot of noise, the buying and selling of money, coins, and then the sheep that are bought for the, perhaps to offer sacrifice, are kept there in big number, and the bleeding of the sheep and also the pigeons and all these things. And Jesus says that it is not proper to sell these things in the temple and that is why he's very angry. And he tells them, of course his opponents come and challenge him and says, this has been going on for a long time. Who are you to stop it and why do you want to stop it? And Jesus filled with that spirit or love of God, he says that you destroy this temple, but within three days, I will rebuild it. Of course, he was refer referring to his own body, but the <coughs> Jews thought he was trying to destroy the temple. One word is enough for them to flare up, and they are, uh, they are uh, almost seeking to do away with him. You know, the first reading is also beautiful because it's connected to the gospel from Exodus chapter 20 verse 1 to 7 and there the Lord Yahweh tells about his himself I am the Lord your God and you shall have no other gods before you not only that you will have no other idols before you so this is the first commandment for us that has been expressed so well and also the other commandments keep the name of the Lord holy Keep the Sabbath holy, Keep, uh, have respect for the others, do not kill, do not commit adultery. And so all these are perhaps focused on one commandment that you shall have no other gods but me. No other gods before me. And as I said, this connects the zeal of Jesus in order to destroy those things that are perhaps not worthy enough to be kept in the temple to be thrown out and to be destroyed. The zeal of the God is enveloped him. And the third reading also, what we call the from Corinthians chapter 1, 22 to 25, St. Paul gives us another view of God himself. This God, who is an eternal God, who is a zealous God. And Jesus shows that this God is the most important for us than anything else in the temple. But St. Paul gives the other side of God. How God is not one who shows off, who tries to glory and magnificence, but 
he speaks of the cross our god is one who embraces the cross and so for st paul said this is foolishness this is first of all scandal for the jews because for the jews to connect anything with the cross was to connect with the lowest or perhaps the least thing and they avoided the cross so they put a scandal for them and for the greeks it is a foolishness it's a foolishness greeks believed in success in wisdom in proficiency in excellence and they put to go down to that level of the cross was foolishness for them but then st paul very bra- bravely says we preach christ crucified a stumbling block to the jews but folly and folly to the gentiles and so jews demand signs and greeks demand wisdom but the wisdom for us is this that our jesus who suffered died but rose again the resurrection part once again places him as the god of our lives and you shall have no other god before him because he has even been successful to defeat not only evil but also death what do we learn from this i just sort of jotted five small points from the whole readings of today in order to help you in your meditation or reflection or perhaps take home something for yourself the first one is lent is a time of doing some spiritual cleaning you know we are all used to cleaning a house maybe sometimes we do it once a year once a month once a year of course we do a complete overhauling and cleaning of the things so also our own houses our own temples need cleaning need cleansing and therefore the lenten season is a beautiful season to cleanse ourselves and this gospel provides us enough matter to see that what are the things that we have to throw out there are many things that we have to throw out from our houses from our families from our perhaps the workplace you know sometimes your table gets full of so many things this is there that is there that is there but then you have to sit and clean it up and say that this can be thrown away this has to be sent somewhere and that is the sort of spring cleaning the spiritual cleaning that we can do in the lenten season uh secondly we also speak about the temple temple and what is a temple first of all the temple is perhaps some may say the church a spiritual structure where we will go to reflect to word to reflect upon the word to pray to god that's the temple but you know sometimes even holy places become boring places holy places become the normal places in english we have that expression familiarity breeds contempt there are some people perhaps who go again and again and so the church loses its importance for them suppose uh, a man comes from saudi arabia or one of these gulf countries where there is absolutely no church no worship you know the when he goes to the church here in india it's as good as he goes with his hands joined because church is something special temple is something special so therefore i think there is something called familiarity has crept into our practices of the church also we say the rosary lifeless someone is shouting there someone is one we see the hymns we think what you need is to add more music more beats more drums and more noise even the eucharist perhaps i even say we priests and religious are also perhaps do not see the eucharist the sacraments well you know at every altar in most of our parishes especially the older parishes we you see the front of the altar when we sit behind on the chair we can see the behind the altar and the, there it's written beautifully dear priest celebrate this mass as your first mass celebrate this mass as your last mass and celebrate this mass as your only mass how beautiful you know first mass how much unction and spirituality and devotion we have but after that slowly perhaps it creeps in and we just sort of 
utter or mutter some words and finish up celebrate it as the last mass if suppose i were in my death bed and uh, the doctor tells me another 6 hours another 5 hours to live and i ask for a a table to celebrate the mass how i would celebrate it celebrate is the only mass only mass those who are going to as i said to some of the gulf countries perhaps china russia the communist countries there is no chance of celebrating mass even secretly they say because if you are caught you are just thrown away and therefore if it's the only mass that you want to celebrate that's the what i speak of the temple and the familiarity perhaps that spoils everything and therefore the temple i also speak about what we call the temple of our own body of our own body st paul says your body is the temple of the holy spirit it needs cleansing we have to throw away something from our head something from our table something from our mouth something from our ears something from my eyes which i have to throw away the temple is also perhaps what's called the domestic church the family the family is called the domestic church church it is called the domestic church which means it's a temple and perhaps we parents along with the children we have to think in context of this gospel of the cleansing of the temple that our family is also a temple a domestic church and what are the things that we don't need here you don't carry your let us say your tiffin carrier to the church it's not necessary you eat at home and come you don't take perhaps your mobiles and this and that and place it here place it there it's not necessary so also in the family the mother and the father to sit together and see that what are the things that are absolutely necessary in this family and perhaps what is not necessary the nonsense chat that we do is not necessary the mother has to be strict and say we are all sitting on the table here look at us talk to us keep that phone down keep that phone out or put it off because we have brought too many things that's why and so cleansing of the temple the thirdly i see that uh, ask jesus to enter our home our temple you know jesus needs to come once in a way unless you know martha and mary when jesus was coming perhaps they prepared it so well the house was so much spick and span and everything was there and martha ran inside to bring something for jesus and mary was sitting at his feet so also we have to invite jesus into our house perhaps jesus will notice many things even though i have clean clean i have cleansed my house jesus may say no 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 that corner there is something there and you remove to need to remove this old garland you remove cut to this one so you have to welcome jesus into our life first of all into our churches that jesus is the one who proclaims jesus is the one who gives rather is part of the sacraments the first communion of the children it's only many of the the family celebrate this only as a social celebration we invite the guests we want to take as many photos as possible the girls and the boys are dressed like kings and queens with that it's finishes it's finishes but if we are going to tell the child that you see in the first communion that jesus is coming into your heart the sacrament of matrimony the sacrament of confession you know so much needed in the lenten season so therefore we invite jesus in into a house number fourth i say that uh, money cannot buy god it's absolutely true you can't buy god with money many of us think that uh, maybe i can compensate my evil or perhaps even by putting money i can uh, put my name in the public domain by making so many charities perhaps even there are some people who would like to help and support the church so that their names are known i don't know you can't buy god with money and so jesus cleanses the temple of this money matters that are there there are two different things you know in one of the in my little circular that i have asked 
the priests to bless the houses to bless the houses it's a it's a great opportunity for the pastor to go in search of his of his flock you know jesus soon after his resurrection what did he do he went in search of his disciples each one of them and he didn't uh, send a notice to say all of you come and meet me here no rather he went to those places that they gathered peter and uh, john and uh, james were on the shore they were fishing and they had not caught for jesus went there for to meet thomas jesus goes once again to the assembly so therefore so also the pastor i say that goes in search of his people goes and meets the people and he speaks to them and that is how perhaps he can also get a feel of the people and therefore he can also say that to the people what is really god and finally i say that uh, you know st paul's beautiful reading of corinthians speaks about wisdom and foolishness and what we think is wisdom for us wisdom is getting more and more degrees writing more and more books reading more and more books giving more and more lectures is wisdom but st paul seems to this foolishness because the real wisdom is experiencing defeat carrying the cross the carrying the cross and the cross itself burden some want to throw away imagine if jesus at the way of the cross suddenly thought this is too much for me i don't want i will use my miraculous powers to see that all of you are uh, uh, sort of a um, and uh, given punishments for punishing me and i will throw this cross and go away history rather our salvation history would now have been different but jesus carries the cross so st paul says the cross has got wisdom and the foolishness is to think that uh, we can do without the cross so that is why st paul also gives a beautiful message this way i repeat once again first of all as i said that lent is a time of doing spiritual cleaning secondly the significance of the temple the holiness of the temple our own churches our own bodies which are temples of the holy spirit and our own families with our domestic churches which need to be cleansed thirdly i say that uh, Jesus needs to be invited into our house. You know, sometimes when the inspector, the education inspector comes to the school, he notices certain things and points out, you have not done this, you have not done this. So also better that we call Jesus and say that I think my house is perfect, but if you notice something more, surely we will be useful. And fourthly, I say that money cannot buy God. And that's why Jesus throws out those coins. and there are many things perhaps we also associate with god and godly things that we think money can buy and finally i have said that is in paul's wisdom and foolishness this wisdom is to carry the cross to embrace the cross and to to profit from jesus own death on the cross so that we can all be part of the resurrection i wish you a good reflection my dear brothers and sisters The second point that perhaps is put before me is what's called the Pope's intention for the month of March. You know, I don't have to repeat. Every month the Holy Father gives a particular intention to be prayed upon so that every day of the month we think of this special intention of the Holy Father. Of course, it's also for the universal church the Holy Father doesn't sort of the pray only for himself. do he does sometimes but it's mostly the holy father praying for the church and the world and so the intention this time is very very special and very very thoughtful the holy father pope francis asks us to pray in this month for the martyrs of our day who are witnesses to christ it's a beautiful theme you know we have heard of the martyrs we have read of the martyrs sometimes we read perhaps to give stories to our children you know saint uh, blessed rani maria 25th of february in fact the bishop of indore had called me every year they celebrate this feast of blessed rani maria 
she went from kerala she was a nun she went to the north and there she was among the people and especially fighting against the rights of the people because the women were considered as thrown away throw away objects the men also were not paid properly there was this caste difference everything was there and she was fighting for them and because of which she not only liberated many people many got them courage and so her enemies thought that the best way would be to eliminate her and so they killed her fortunately there is another story that is coming up that her own assailant the one who attacked and killed her is not only transformed because she was accepted as one of the family of sister rani maria's family and now he himself has become a sort of a, a preacher or rather a one who proclaims and says that not only i have done wrong christianity has got something to offer to the world including forgiveness forgiveness of those who have who have attacked those who have murdered even for them there is forgiveness so i would just let me come back to the pope's intention to say that to pray for the martyrs of today the witnesses you know the love of christ the pope says we have to accept the love of christ and accept to be faithful to the point of death mm, they will always be martyrs among us we can't say that martyrdom is over you know even in our own country there are many people who have died we have spoken of the kandamal martyrs about 10 15 years ago perhaps some martyrs also will be spoken of in the place called manipur who have died for faith and there are so many others places where people are dying and giving their life for the god so this is a sign that we are on the right path you know the the what we call the death of the martyrs is always seed for new feet the blood of the martyrs so therefore there is always sign that the church is on the move the church is increasing and improving because of the martyrs a person who knows holy father says very much in this sort of a small video that he gives for the month for the intention of the month for the holy father speaks about a non christian whose wife died for feet because the enemies and the terrorists that come and asked her to give her crucifix and said throw it away and they smashed it but she didn't but then they slit her neck and she died and so the holy father says when we went to that particular place i think lesthos in an african country and when he met the husband of this lady came forward and said that i was a non christian but then the sacrifice of my wife has converted me has made me a different man today so therefore the blood of the martyrs keeps on giving us new crops new shoots as it were the courage of the martyrs the witness of the martyrs is a blessing for everybody so therefore the holy father says let us pray for those who risk their lives for the gospel in various parts of the country that we might imbue the church with courage and missionary drive so therefore the holy father says be always open for the grace of martyrdom